I'm going to read to you uh, an excerpt from near the beginning of my new novel, Buffalo Destiny, and I'm just going to set it up for you a little bit. Our, our protagonist is the amazing Conroy, a former stage hypnotist turned CEO, and he's traveling with his, uh, animal, his alien animal companion, a buffalo dog or buffalito by the name of Reggie, and they're going off to see a longtime friend, uh, the professional gambler known as Left John Mocker. Uh, Left John's back just recently returned to Earth. He owns a quarter share in a Chinese restaurant, and, and Conroy's dropping by. I should make something clear. I'm a foodie, a gourmand at heart, and at stomach as well. Even during my years as a struggling hypnotist, any time the money gods smiled upon me, I blew it all on exquisite meals. I crave both new tastes and old, the familiar served up in novel ways or blended with the exotic to enhance both. Satisfying my palate has always been my weak spot. Left John Mocker's return to Earth had coincided with the hiring of a new chef at the Golden Turtle Palace. Uh, my old friend had asked me to come by and provide my expert opinion of her new menu items. I had barely exchanged greetings and taken my seat before the first platter arrived. John served, scooping a sample of chicken and a, a sample of a chicken and vegetable mix onto my plate, and then scooping a larger portion into a soup tureen at the other end of the table. Reggie had positioned himself there moments before, bounding from floor to chair to tabletop, skidding on a cloth napkin before finally coming to rest. This is excellent, I said after tasting several bites. What is it? How about you tell me what's in it, and I tell you the name we're putting on the menu. You're on. Hmm. Well, obviously there's chicken and eggplant. Uh, no, wait, make that two kinds of eggplant. Also broccoli, vanilla, and at least three kinds of peppers. She calls it ancestral chicken reclining. So, you like it? I took another bite. Absolutely. You've always had the best Chinese food here in Newark, Jersey. But you've really raised the bar this time. Good. I'm glad you approve. John's voice had been its typical level neutral tone, and a quick glance at his face go gave no clue if he was being sincere or sarcastic. Even at his happiest, I've rarely known the man to crack a smile. Being able to keep your emotions off your face has to be an important skill for any gambler, particularly one rated and ranked by the Probability Guild. Part of it, too, may just be cultural. The mocker is a full-blooded Comanche, from his pierced ears to his ponytail, and he has stoicism down to an art. So, not knowing how he really felt, I just shrugged. Reggie appears to like it, too. In fact, my buffalo dog had not only devoured the full contents of his bowl, he'd licked it clean and taken a few bites out of the bowl itself before abandoning it. This wasn't too unusual. Buffalo dogs can eat literally anything. Reggie shoved aside his bowl and advanced on the unguarded platter itself. Good lord, don't you ever feed your pet, Conroy? It's because I already fed him that he's so hungry, I said. There was an accident on the highway. A fellow in an old-style SUV got crunched up pretty bad, just a couple car lengths in front of my cab. He was trapped in the vehicle, not to mention cut up and sliding into shock. What'd you do? I coaxed Reggie into eating his way through the parts that had the guy pinned. We had him out just as the paramedics arrived. They said if he'd been left there a minute longer, he'd have been dead. I reached out and gave the buffalo dog's neck a reassuring scritch. His eyes smiled warmly at me, but he didn't slow his efforts with the platter. Prior to coming here, Reggie ate several pounds of plastic and metal. Which should have left him sated, not hungry for more, said Left John Mocker. Well, just the opposite, actually. A free-feeding buffalito can lightly graze continuously without actually eating all that much. Think of it as constant snacking. But when you push one to consume large amounts in short intervals, its appetite actually takes a jump to the next level of satiety. That's where Reggie is now. But don't worry, he'll fill up soon. But John's voice trailed off for a moment. He stared at Reggie and then returned his gaze to me. What would happen if you keep feeding him anyway? I grabbed Reggie by the scruff of his neck and pulled him away from the platter for just a moment, forcing him to take a brief break. Believe me, you don't want to see that. It would bump him up to the next higher plateau, and then you'd have a really hungry buffalo dog on your hands. What's the upper limit? 
Before I could answer, a server arrived with another entree and fresh plates. It was some kind of beef dish, and the mocker placed a sample in front of me, took some for himself, and then moved the platter to the opposite end of the table from Reggie. What's this one called, I said, as I made a mental list of the ingredients. Unexpected beef of serendipity. So, you didn't answer. What's the upper limit? I sampled the dish. Chewy, with a rich beefy flavor, a subtle marinade, and a faint minty undertaste. Mmm, tasty, but who thinks up the menu names? It's a translation thing, the mocker replied curtly. Look, if you don't want to answer, there isn't one, so far as I know. Isn't what? An upper limit? I nodded again, swallowed, and took a sip of water. That's what my experts tell me. Theoretically, the increases are geometric, and after you bump it up a couple of times, the buffalo dog is ravenous and will eat nonstop for hours, like a kind of omnivorous frenzy. It's a disaster waiting to happen, and about the only drawback the creatures have. John had taken another mouthful of beef while I explained. He paused in mid-chew, which I took to mean he was dubious. Don't worry, I said. We take precautions. Every buffalo dog we lease comes with a handler to keep the snacking from becoming something dangerous. That's not what I was thinking about. Just the opposite, in fact. I'm surprised you haven't pushed it further. He put his fork down and reached out to brush his fingers through Reggie's fur. Have you considered what you might be missing out on? Missing out? John, it wouldn't take much encouragement to get Reggie to eat, eat everything in your kitchen and then start in on the walls. I really don't think we're missing out. I didn't mean here and now. I was just thinking of the ecological implications. Imagine what a ramped up buffalo dog would, could do to a landfill site. That stopped me. I put my chopsticks down and would have replied, but the sound of profound flatulence interrupted me. Left John and I both turned to the source, which unfortunately was my buffalo dog. That's the other thing about these amazing creatures. Not only can they eat anything, they somehow convert it all into oxygen, which they fart in great quantity. It's also why I never take Reggie into the smoking section of restaurants. Reggie didn't seem to care that he'd become the center of attention. He'd worked his way around the table and pressed his face firmly into the platter of unexpected beef of serendipity. He lapped up every last bit, taking a bite or two out of the platter as he finished the food. I've never thought about it before, but you might be on to something, I said. Left John rolled his eyes at me. I was joking. Reggie isn't going to be able to devour our landfill site. I don't care how hungry he is. Maybe not, I said, but I glanced over at Reggie and filed the idea away. Several more dishes were brought out for me to sample, to a grand total of eight. Reggie's appetite had calmed down, and he contented himself with licking the shards of his platter clean while I gave John feedback on his chef's creations. When we were done, Reggie and I dashed through the rain again into another cab. I gave the driver directions to the company headquarters in Philadelphia, and then made a quick phone call to my assistant. I knew that within minutes of hanging up, she'd have the wheels of industry spinning at Buffalogic Inc. I leaned back in the cab and closed my eyes, spinning a few wheels of my own, as I thought about the possibilities that hadn't existed two hours before. Reggie curled up in my lap, pawed at my knee a couple of times, and went to sleep. By the book. <laughs>